Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Wednesday, April 7th. And from an increase in COVID-19 variant activity to a lawsuit against former President Donald Trump, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, I do want to talk about the weather because it was kind of a scorcher out there today, right? Is that heat going to continue? I don't know. Let's check with our first alert weather team. Well, this evening there's a slight chance of a shower popping up, especially in the west end of our viewing area. And then overnight, a slight chance of a shower as well. But the best chance of picking up rain will come during the daylight hours tomorrow. You can see by looking at this map, the wind is going to be coming in out of the south. And in the afternoon hours tomorrow, not only will showers pop up, but the potential uh, for a thunderstorm and maybe even a stronger storm as the day wears on. Keep that in mind for Thursday. And look at the moisture supply coming in from the south into Friday. There'll be at least a chance of showers, but do you see the motion of the clouds? There's low pressure off to the west. It's a very slow moving area. And over the weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, it is going to bring chances of rain. Friday, though much of it may be dry. Look for unsettled weather with winds gusting to 30 miles per hour. So we're about to enter a stretch here uh, that looks a little bit interesting. April showery. Mostly cloudy tonight. There will be a chance of some showers, mainly after midnight. 56, the low temperature. Then tomorrow, scattered showers. A thunderstorm is a possibility. The high is going to climb to 76, and on Friday up to 72, really breezy day there. Gusts up to 30 miles per hour with a slight chance of showers in on Friday. Saturday and Sunday, I think highs will drop back into the 60s because of rain. And Saturday, I have a 90% chance and Sunday a 60% chance. It could be a wet weekend, maybe a good weekend to catch some golf on TV, the Masters week. And the full findings of MGSU student Stone Foltz's autopsy were released today by the Lucas County Coroner. In the verdict, the coroner notes, it's my opinion that Stonefolds died of fatal ethanol intoxication during a hazing incident. The manner of death was recorded as accident-college fraternity induction ritual. The autopsy was conducted March 7th, the day Foltz was taken off of life support, and three days after the hazing incident at an off-campus Pi Kappa Alpha fraternity party. The coroner's verdict was dated on April 2nd. The family of Stone Foltz received the autopsy report from the Lucas County Coroner's Office, according to their attorney yesterday. The attorneys provided an updated statement to WTOL today, saying, The Lucas County Coroner's autopsy report provides valuable information regarding the cause of Stone Foltz's death. Without question, he died as a result of the college fraternity induction ritual. The statement that his death was accidental, without any witness interviews or evidence about Stone being forced to drink an entire handle of whiskey, has no value and doesn't impact anything criminally. Stone's death at the hands of fraternity members hazing him and other pledges was both deliberate and reckless and we will not stop until justice is done and this type of behavior never occurs again on a college campus in this country. Foltz's blood alcohol content was 0.394, according to the family, who said it was likely even higher immediately after the alleged hazing ritual. In Ohio, 0.08 is the threshold to term someone as legally drunk. The incident remains under investigation by authorities and the university, who recently hit Pike with six violations of the student code of conduct. And U.S. Representative Marcy Kaptur is just one of multiple plaintiffs in a lawsuit that claims that former President Donald Trump and his former personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, conspired to incite the riots at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Kaptur was among the lawmakers sheltering in place inside the House gallery as rioters stormed and entered the Capitol. In a civil lawsuit filed in a personal capacity by Mississippi Democratic Representative Benny Thompson, the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, Trump and Giuliani are accused of conspiring with far-right groups, Proud Boys, and Oath Keepers to incite the January 6th insurrection. The lawsuit cites a post-Civil War law meant to combat violence and intimidation by the Ku Klux Klan. The group's Proud Boys and Oath Keepers are also named as defendants. This newly filed complaint also names the War Boys LLC operating in conjunction with the Proud Boys and Enrique Tario, an alleged leader of the Proud Boys and War Boys. Reached for comment on Wednesday, Captor said, The events of January 6 were no accident. There must be consequences for those who contributed to the coordinated attempt to overturn a free and fair election and harm our democracy. This lawsuit is an important step in repairing the damage that's been done, and I am pleased to join so many of my colleagues in this fight. And for a closer look at the suit, including what other lawmakers have signed on, check out the link in the description of this video.
And Jack Hanna has been diagnosed with dementia and will retire from public life, according to a letter released by his family today. In the letter, Jack's daughters Kathleen, Suzanne, and Julie Hanna stated their dad was diagnosed with dementia and now believed to be Alzheimer's disease, and his condition progressed much faster than expected in the last few months. His daughter said that while their father's health has deteriorated quickly, his great sense of humor continues to shine through. Jack is also well known for his live animal demonstrations on talk shows hosted by Johnny Carson, David Letterman, and James Corden, increasing the profile of the Columbus Zoo and leading to massive attendance increases over the years. Jack hosted the popular syndicated TV show Jack Hanna's Animal Adventures from 1993 to 2008. He also hosted Jack Hanna's Into the Wild, which started in 2007, and Jack Hanna's Wild Countdown until last year. And a variant of the coronavirus first identified in Britain is now the most common strain of the virus in the United States. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky says the strain formerly known as B117 is now the most common lineage circulating in the United States. The strain has been shown to be more transmissible and infectious among younger Americans, which Walensky says contributed to the rising case counts in recent weeks. Walensky says new outbreaks have been tied to youth sports and daycare centers, and she particularly encouraged states with rising caseloads to curtail or suspend youth sports activities to slow the spread of the virus. Right now, there's been no mention of Ohio following that advice. And before I go, I feel like I do need to mention it's National Beer Day. And what better day to have a cold pint, right? But I want to hear from you. I want to know what your favorite brewery is in the Northwest Ohio area. So make sure you shout them out, give them some love in the comments below. But that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you're in the loop.